Rav Bolsa, we began Daf Tzadi Beis yesterday, and we began a very, very challenging, profound sugya of called Hora Betos, which means the following, that as a general rule, if Bezdin issues an incorrect, mistaken Hora, a verdict which they let's say, should have been more careful about, and they got confused about the halacha, but they applied what they thought were the proper principles that would operate and, and determine the halacha in a particular case, then if the toes was a chiv kares, or even worse, a chiv misa, and let's say the bezdin came to the conclusion that you're allowed to do X on Shabbos because it's not a malach. Now the people went ahead and relying on Bezdin, they, they, they did that malach because Bezdin told them it was mutter and it really was awesome. Normally, when an individual is guilty of an avera, which is mechayafim kares, amazing, then he has to bring a korban chatas. But here, since he was relying on Bezdin, we shift the responsibility to the shoulders of the Bezdin, and they will have to bring what's called a par helling dovishal tzibur. They need a kapara, and the individuals are relieved of their chiv kapara. However, as our sugi will point out, that's because the Bezdin gave Hora based on their understanding of the Kloli Allah, of the principles of Allah. If Bezdin gave a ruling which is based on a mistaken reality, for example, if Bezdin Paskins, that Shabbos is over, meaning that the sun already set, and they were looking from a certain perspective where it seemed like the sun was set, and lo and behold, the sun has not yet set. Now the people went ahead based on the Horaz Bezdin, and they made Avdullah, they violated the Shabbos. In this case, they would have to bring a Korban Chatas. Paradoxically, you would say, well, in this case, Bezdin is even more guilty. How could they possibly, you know, oh, Shabbos, Shabbos is over, let's make Avdullah, and the sun hasn't set yet, because they were confused about it. But no, the halacha is that the only category in which Bezdin takes over the responsibility and the carbon is shifted from the yachid to the Bezdin is only when you have a hora, And that's a legal entity which is recognized as a hora. Again, there was a mistake in the hora. In all the cases we're discussing, there was an, there was an error. But you can have an error that is so blatant that you can't even call it a ruling of the, of the courts. What do you mean the courts ruled that Shabbos is over? That's not a ruling. Without a hurrah, we cannot shift the carbon from the yachid over to Bez. Now in our Mishnah, here in Yavamas, she brought one witness to testify that her husband died and Bezdin gave her a hurrah, allowing her to marry a second husband. And the Mishnah says that when her first husband comes back alive and well, she does not bring a karma. Tura mena karma. She got married based on the testimony of one witness with a het of Bezdin. Now, wait a second, Bezdin just asking what? That her husband is dead. It's not like her baby. Her husband's alive. And Zairi in our Gemara is going to say that that's exactly the same as Bezdin Paskin that Shabbos is over when the sun is, hasn't yet set. The reality contradicts the ruling of Bezdin. And in such a case, that's not a hurrah betos. That doesn't have the status of hurrah. 
Omar Zairi, less Olavasthisen, which you'll see here on the fourth line down from the top of Tzadi Beis. Omar Less Olavasthisen, that's a very heavy term. We reject the Mishnah. Why do we reject the Mishnah? Because we have a principle that is formulated by Brisa, which we have accepted. But what is that principle? Be the Tani Bemij Rasha. There was a Brisa that was accepted as a reliable Brisa in our base Midrash. The Tani Bemij Rasha, Horu Bezdin Sheshaka Chama. Bezdin ruled that the sun has set. Go out and now make Avdolah. Ulubasof Zarcha. And as it turns out, they made a major error and the sun is still shining. Ainzu Hora Elatos. It does not have the status of Hora. Hence, each individual who violated the Shabbos, albeit the Shoge, will have to bring his own personal karma. Now, I'll read to you the comment here in the Pasifta. Are you smurin bezdin sheba? Dabaliola, who can ace his power, lukum shalobaliola. Bezdin thought that there is a reality out there in the physical universe, and it's not true. They thought the reality was that the sun set, but that's not true. Became and she came. Bezdin eno mevi and parhelim dovashel tzibur. Because parhelim dovashel tzibur is generated as a people bezdin when there was a horah. This is not called horah. Elakol yachid viyachid she osal pi ora osam vechila as a shabbos may be carbon chatos if they atzmo. Imagine what man they're going to have to pay the kind of overtime. The place is going to be flooded with people who relied on Bezdin and violated the Shabbos. Not only that, it could be that each person would have to be, bring multiple carbonates because he violated the Shabbos in multiple ways. Lafi also Brisa, based on the principle of that price that was accepted in the base Medrash, is in our Mishnah Shenises Alpi Psak Bezdin, and the Bezdin was Somech Al Eid Echon to the effect that her husband died. He says, her marriage to a second husband, Lo Machmas Horas Bezdin. There's no Chalashem Oras Bezdin to be Matir because now we found out that her husband's alive. They said that her husband is dead. Bezdin allowed her to get married. So that marriage is not Alpi Bezdin, meaning it's not Alpi Oras Bezdin. She doesn't have in her back pocket a Oras Bezdin to the effect that she could get married. Again, we don't know that, but we'll find out later that this is not our own space and our husband's alive. El Bezdin Amru Shechol Lismach Al Ha'ev Akka'et Shabay Lachoser V'nizbar Shulchai Misbarer Shahoy Satoz V'meshet so there's a reality check over here. It's not a, a mistake in shikol halacha. You know the well. You know Bezdin says. You know Beit Shammai says mutter and Beit Sol says saucer, and we go like Beit Shammai instead of Beit Sol. They made a mistake. They they confused who holds what. There's an endless number of potential errors in shikol adas for a halacha. But whatever it is, Bezdin issued a bona fide, reliable horror that now we find out 
is, is, is a mistake. But it's still a hurrah. And it generates a chiyuv. Karbon, par, helen, dovashel, tzibu. But in a case where Bezdin says the guy is dead, and I have news for you, my friend, he's alive, like Bezdin says, Shabbos is ended, but the sun didn't set yet. There's no chiv carbon, par, helen, dovashel, tzibu. There's no hora. And if, no, if there's no hora, the ball gets sent back into the court of every yachid the yachid who violated that Isakaris and is now responsible to bring his own personal karma. And yet Al Mishnah says that when her husband shows up, she is Ptura Minakar. That's against the price of the Bay Midrash. So says the Eden. And I can I understand the Gemara. But as Steve will tell you, because he doesn't rely on Zoom, at least not today, yesterday. So he will tell you that I had a lot of problems with Rav Nach. Not Rav Nach of Oman. This is, this is Rav Nach of Bava. Because Rav Nach says that there's no contradiction between the Bryce of the Baby Drosha and our mission. And that apparent contradiction can be reconciled. And here's where we get, get into hot water because Zairi is black on white. The, the analogy to the case of, of Shoka Chama, where the Bezdin were mistaken about the reality, is a perfect analogy because here too, Bezdin are mistaken about the reality. Rav Nachman Omar, Orahi, even though the husband is alive and well, the hora that he was dead, that he, I, I say was dead, I mean, is dead, but was meaning when, when they gave the hora, is against the reality, it's against the uh, mitzvahs. Orahi. You don't have a mistaken reality that would undermine the entire status of the Ura and make it into a toast go. No, no, no. It's a valid Ura. And therefore, our mission is correct. She's not Chayevis Be Karma. She was Nisei Salpi Ura Spesta. So yesterday, we tried to distinguish between this case of Eid Echad, Mises Baila, and the case of Shkia Sachama Shabbos. From the perspective of the final ruling of Bezdin, The eerie is absolutely correct. The analogy is perfect. You can't tell me that there's a valid ruling that he's alive when he's dead. It's not Shabbos when it is Shabbos. But of Nachman's perspective, is the cause of the error. We go back to the root of the mistake of Bez. If the root of the problem was a halachic problem, meaning Bez made an error in weighing the evidence, that's already a halachic problem. That doesn't undermine the whole wrong. So although it's true, MS and, and Zairi is correct, that when they said, well, your husband is dead, that's against the Mitzvahs. But if you ask me, what was the nature of that whole wrong? 
what brought Bezdin to that conclusion, it's the fact that they relied on one aid and they understood Allah that when she gets married based on this one aid, we assume and we have a right to assume that she checked out, she spoke to every yenta, every she investigated every single person that you can you and I can think of. And by the way, the yenta here doesn't have to be a female yenta, it could be a male yet. She did her job and she came to the conclusion that her husband is no doubt dead. And Bezdin made the assumption that if one aide testifies that her husband died, she is eager to get remarried, she must have done the investigation. That was a toast in the shikol adas, in the halachic framework or weighing the evidence, etc. But it's not a toes in the reality. Although again, there's no question that there's a reality check here that has to go. I mean, he's not dead, he's alive. And that's the eerie. But if you ask me for the background, for the cause, if we go back to the root cause of their mistake, it wasn't a mistake in Mitzius. That's not what they're guilty of. And if two Aiden would have come into Bezdin, and Bezdin, based on the testament of two Aiden, would have allowed her to get married, and then the husband comes pumping into Bezdin on two feet alive and breathing, then for sure that would be a case of Parahelim Dovashoksi. Because the Ras Bezdin is exactly what the Torah tells you. Rely on the testimony of two Abim. You investigate the Abim, you check out their credentials, you find the Yuchsin, everything checks out. There's no reason to suspect that these Abim are perjuring themselves. That would be a Ras Bezdin. I'll be a bit told. They said that the husband's daughter are dead, but he's alive. But that's all wrong. In our case, where there was only one aid, we have a machlok between Zairi and Rav Nachman. Zairi, from his part, says this is not a wrong. To say that he's alive when he's dead, that's not a wrong. And Rav Nachman says, wait a minute, they relied on the testimony of one aid. So again, Zairi. You know, as a, imagine the ghost of Zeria that's yelling and screaming, what do you mean you relied on what aid? You didn't have two witnesses. And to that, Rav Nachman would add, well, we rely on the fact that she is eager to get married. She must have done her due diligence. That's called Isha Daiko Mitzvah. And therefore, the Allah is correct. According to the Kloli Allah, we're allowed and we're even obligated to give her license to get remarried. Omar of Nachman Teda, I'll prove this to you. Dorahi, <clears throat> that the Psak of Bezdin, based on the testimony of 1 8, is considered Ora. And her Nisuin to the second husband can be attributed to Moras Bezdin. How can we rely on one aid? I mean, the the, the dionomy of the Bezdin is not a bunch of, you know, Amaratsi, they're not ignorant people. Why did they rely on one aid? And the answer is that here you rely on one aid and you assume he's telling the truth. Because otherwise, why would she agree to marry another husband? Who might time up? Why is his testimony? Powerful enough to allow her to get remarried, Labi should right. It must be that there's a wrong. He can't say that she went ahead and got married without a whole wrong. That's not what our mission is talking about. 
she may be guilty, and she is guilty of not checking out the reality and the uh, you know, as I said before, you know, investigating with any passerby on the face of the earth. So once again, I want to read the the, the commentary. It says, That's a rhetorical question. Why do we rely on one age? How could Bezdin have told her to get married? Unless there is such a valid hope. I'm not sure what the word alehen means here. Anybody, if you don't have the Masifta, it's going to be hard about Peb, but what does the word Alehem mean? John, you have the Masifta. Can you tell me what the word Alehem means? The Alehem Anu something. So who's Anu? Alehem Anu Sonke. Lahatir is I mean, because I would have said Lahatir is is referring to Bezdin. So what's Alehem Anu Sonke? There's only one aid. How can he call it Alehem? Is there a printing error here or, or am I missing the point? Or it's just the person she's going to marry with all the potential. Suitors. Suitors are relying on me. A lamb means best, right? Anu samchim are the suitors. Lahatir is a ish. I don't want to make a mountain out of a molehill, but the, the language here is, is tough for me. Again, I might be my fault. I'm missing something. You know what a lamb might mean? Now I'm thinking about this. Maybe the word a lamb means a echad plus har. That's why you use. A so plus B. That's usually what you said. Ah, I, I, I don't remember what the mascara was. Yeah. Is, that the, I don't remember, is that the final mascara? I have to go over that. But in any event, okay. the fact that she's getting married, plus the fact that there's an Eidech, and I'll lay him on him so Maybe that's what he means. A readiness to get married, plus the testimony of the A. The best in Omru. The F shall list of Alha Eid Echad. Avon shall some Kuala Isha. And shall Otina say Koran should Tivdok hate it. Imachain Bailo Mix. I think that's not bad. That a limb maybe refers to both A and B. Ulon. Kishib. Bailo Chazar. Nisbarer Shehem Tau Bahora Osa. Again, Tau is it very tricky. Tau Bahora Osa, they made a mistake, but it doesn't mean, I mean, every case of Parahel and Dov Shaltzibar is Tau Bahora Osa. But it's a toast with Aura, and but it's still called Aura. The Isha Zu, Lo Bodka Hetev Mikoru Shinisais. 
In other words, had they really checked it out and investigated hard, they would have found out that she didn't investigate properly. And that was their mistake. Nimta, Shenisu El Ashniim. Ayu Machas, Ahora, Amutes, Shel Bezdin. Lo Machas, Edu Saidechot. Oh, that's important. When she gets remarried, what, what leads her to get married, so to speak? If it's the Edus of Edechon, then for sure she should bring a car. And keep in mind, Rav Nachman is justifying the ruling of Amish that she is exempt from a car. The answer is that her marriage is a result of the Ross Bez. Because Oraz Bezdin, which was predicated, which, which, which was based on a combination of A, the testimony of one witness, plus her bidika, checking out. That's what led her and allowed her to get married to another husband. So now what we're left is is to ask the following question. Can we now shift the blame onto Bezdin? And the answer is yes. Why? Because they gave a hurrah. True, the hurrah was the toes, but it is a hurrah. And as soon as, let's say I, I meaning representing any yachid who violated the Torah, if I can come and say, well, the reason I violated the Torah is not because I made a mistake, but because I relied on a hurrah's bezden, that exempts me from a karma. And that's the point he's making here, Rav Nach. That no one could rely on Eid Echon and get married on Eishas. Here, Bezdin is authorized to give her a heter with only one aid. She relies on the heter Bezdin. That allows her to shift the responsibility vis-a-vis the carbon from her shoulders onto the shoulders of Bezdin. And if, says Rav Nachman, you would question my premise that there is a Ross Bezdin in this case, and you're going to say, no, 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 she got married based on Eid Echon, then you're in deep trouble because certainly Bezdin allowed to get remarried. How could they allow her to get remarried if there's only one Eid? The answer is that the Torah authorized Bezdin to issue a Ross to be matter her based on one aid. Again, one aid together with Habadik. But nevertheless, they are in, they are in uh, authorized, I don't have a better word right now, to issue a Horah. So that's what Allah is. If we had a Shulchan that would say, Hilfus Horah, there would be a paragraph that said that if one aid testified, about the death of the husband of this woman, she wants to get married, then in Hilchas Horah, Bezdin will issue this Horah, allowing her to get married. And therefore, she's exempt from a carbon in an event that her husband comes back alive because she relied on the Horah. And there had to have been a Horah since her not, because otherwise, how could she get married on the basis of one a? In the note here, he writes, "Kishem sheim horu bezdin shechelav akeva muter." Right when you go through the biology of the kishkas of an animal, 
there are different types of chalev. Chalev is, is fats, but you know, it depends. This, this chalev and that chalev, machasa sekarayim, machasa is this. He's talking about chalev a keva. Keva is the, um, the stomach. So this chalev that covers the keva. That's chalev. But Vezna made a mistake. They, they came to the conclusion based on their shikol adas in the halachic world that chalev akeva is not the chalev that the Torah prohibited. You, again, you meaning the royal, you here, went ahead and you ate that cave. You had a great supper. You know, it had the hashkocha of badats, you know, because the Bezdin, Paskin, mistakenly, that this chalev is not chalev. Tasted great. Now you find that it's chalev. Bezdin made a mistake. You have a right to shift the blame onto the shoulders of Bezdin. Bezdin will bring a, a, a carbon. You are part of a carbon. They didn't remember or know that Chelev HaKev is also. So the people relied on Daitom Latiro. Arezu Toz Kahora Asam Umevim Par Helim Dovashotzi. It was a hurrah. Staken, but it was a raw, and the people relied on best. Ah, so to the nimshal, gam kishe bezdin somchu al masha isha bodekas hate it. If mace bila or low mace bila, me call them shinis is the eight of me is nimza sheto bora awesome. The low tobe mitzvahs. See those last three words are a little bit uh, out of my league. What do you mean low tobe mitzvahs? Again, uh, it comes back to I think the same thing. Lo garma tobe mitzvahs es hora asam. In the case of shkia sachama. Tau b'mitzius v'zeg goram hora asim. Here, right here, what's goram hora asim is the fact that they relied on the fact that she would be bodekus, and the halacha perhaps would criticize Bezdin because he shouldn't have just relied on the fact that she's bodekus. I don't know what kind of personality she is. Maybe she was laid back about it. And there were many holes in our investigation. But nevertheless, Bezdin relied on the assumption that together with the Eidech, there'll be Isha Bodekes. And they issued on Ra. They made a mistake by relying on her. It was a toast in the Shikol Adas of weighing the evidence. They naively relied on the evidence of her willingness to get remarried. They shouldn't have done it. But the Torah still remains Torah. And if you ask the question, why she married another man, the answer is because of Torah's best. Hence, the Mishnah says that she does not have to bring a car. She nor her second husband. Omar Rava, Nero wants to come back and support Zairi. Teda, I'm going to tell you that when Bezer relied on the testimony of one aid, the toast, who that's not called a hurrah. That's a toast to be equated with the case where they said it was after Shkia. The Ilu Horu Bezdin, Bechelet, Ubedam, Led Tero. I'm not sure. I think these are two different cases, as far as I can tell. In case number one, they were Matir Chelev, 
of a certain uh, certain category, certain type. And in a different case, an alternative case would be where they were matter a certain kind of ta'am. And as it turns out, this was Caleb and it was also, this was Dam and it was also. But they Paskin led Terry. Bahadar Khazu Taimo Li Sura Ihadri vi Amri Letero Lomishkahinalu. So what happened? Is A, B, and C? Is that what happened here? Initially they gave a raw letero. Then they saw a time of Lisura. So they rescinded their original psaq, the chalev and the dam. Now ki hadre the amri lehetero. So once again, they changed their mind. And they went back to their original position, lehetero. Lo meshkachin you don't pay any attention to it. Does Robin know such a thing? I don't know. The Elu, but now let's get back to Alice. We have testimony that her husband died. Echa di Asa Eide Echa. Shreina. So they were matter how to get married. Also trade. Now two witnesses came to testify that our husband's alive. Asarma. The two Adam now contradict the first aid, and they testify that our husband's alive. The Fihadar Otsa Eidachmina, now another witness comes into Besdin to support the original witness that our husband died. So now we have two witnesses against two witnesses. Sharina and Law. In this case, we could rely on the change of heart, so to speak, because new evidence came in. And even though Bezdin yesterday said that she's Asura, today they're going to pass her that she's Mutaz, because now they have a second witness. Umay Taimo. Why are we going to rely on their change of, of Psa? La Mishum de Tosu. Which means that the original psaka on, on the base of one aid is a mistake. So we can accept that second later hurrah, Lakula. Because the first horo is not a horo. So this is how 
Rav Nach, I'm sorry, how Rav is going to prove that the original Hora, based on one aid, is not a Hora at all. Because if it were a Hora, then once they cancel that Hora and they change their mind, they cannot reinstate the original Hora. So when they were Matir, originally, that's not called a Hora, and I'll prove it to you, Rav. Because the halacha is that if Bezdin issues a hurrah, then they change their mind. They can no longer, it's irretrievable, irreversible. They can no longer uphold the original hurrah. Again, how Rubber knows that, I don't know. But Horu Bezdin, Chele Vidam Letera, Hadar Chazu Taimali Sura, Ki Hadri Vi Amri Letera. Why? Because they gave a hurrah and then they rescinded the hurrah. So the second hurrah stands as a conflict, as a negative force against the first hurrah. Yet, in our case, if they relied on one aid that said that she that, that he died, and they gave a hurrah, now two aid and testify that he's alive and well. Now another aide testifies that he's dead. We will now accept the Horaz Bezdin to be Matar to get married. How's that possible? How could they now resurrect from the dead the original Horaz Leheter after they themselves gave a Horaz Leisa? We saw from Caleb and Dom they can't do such a thing. The only answer, says Rava, to this problem, the only solution that's possible is to assume that they never had a raw in the first place. If there was a raw ahead in the first place, then after the raw Issa, they could not be chose with another raw ahead and resurrect from the dead their original raw. Those are the rules of the game. You had a raw, you now knocked down the raw, shot it down with an arrow. You cannot bring back the original raw to life. But here, Horu led Terra based on one aid. Now two aid them say Lisura. Now he's got one aid to say that he's dead. Such a case, we will allow for Hora Leheter, but only because the original row is not Hora. And this comes back to our, our presentation that the Machlokas between Zairi and Rav Nachman revolves around the question about whether Ora, based on one aid, is considered Ora. But it turns out that she didn't do a due diligence, and he's really a law. Is that called Ora, such that now she can shift the blame onto him, meaning onto Bezdin, I should say, and she's part of from a code. This is a doozy of a suit. I mean, I, I can't believe that, that you could go through a suit like this, you know, uh, in an hour and say you understood it. So what we're up to here is on Daf Tzadi Beis Amad Al the Af Rabbi Eliezer Sovar Ditoz. Mr. Shem will cover that on Zoom tomorrow. I mean, it's not relevant to Don, but relevant to Steve. And it's not relevant to John either because he's on Zoom. Aloha, Ro. Okay, then. So everyone should have a great day. Thank you so much.